Welcome back to the Rig Review, and today I'm going to take a look at the Toy Rig. You can check out the Toy Rig at toyrig.com, and the review will be posted on my Animation Buffet site, where you have all kinds of reviews and other rigs that I'm pointing to, so check that out as well if you need any more rigs. And how does the process work for Toy Rig? Well, you can go to their site and you can actually check it out for one week for free. Now, disclaimer, I got a license for the character, and thank you for Toy Rig for all the people involved that gave me access to that. And that is how I got the rig, and this is how I'm going to check it out now. Now, in case you do have a license, how this works, you can go download now. You got a terms of use, click download it now, and it gives you here download the file. Now, as you can see, it comes with a regular license and a premium license. And when you download it, you get these two characters in the folder. And the latest version that I downloaded had a version 24 version 2 and a version 25 underscore dolly, which will be the different two rigs here. Now, they do offer one week trial. They have a three month license for $17.97. They have a one year license for $49.99. The toy rig comes with a picker and is compatible with Maya 2018 up to 2020. 22 is not yet confirmed. And you can see also here the regular license for $14.97 and so on. So check out the website for all that information. You can see here whatever will work for you best. That is up to you to decide. So I downloaded the rig. And then you have a how to install. This also comes with a movie if you prefer to watch something instead of reading it. And these are the instructions. So I opened the entire rig version 24 students.mb file. This is what you get. After that, you copy paste the Python command here, which again, you can find in the readme notepad. And it gives you the user ID and the key code. The important part is that you're going to have to copy user ID from Maya and you send it to them. And then within seven days, you will receive your key code. That is important to know just in case you want to use it right now or maybe tomorrow. So definitely factor that in as you are trying to download it and getting ready to use it. You also need to be connected to the internet to run it. And again, all the information is in here. Check that out. And it also gives you the information about how to install their picker. And as you saw before at the bottom here, I have a code JDH101YR. 101 years, you get, <laughs> you get 101 years off. No, no, it's a promo code good for 10% off the one year license or the 10% Anime Warrior stream one year subscription. I'll blend that information in just in case of my accent. <laughs> But that's information. That's super cool. Thank you so much, Toy Rig, for the promo code. I hope people out there watching this can use it and can be helpful. And that is that for the introduction. That is the rig you can see on the channels here. You have mesh, layers on, off, and controls on and off, which with my hotkey, I can turn on and off as well. You got a bunch of controllers. I'm really excited to check this out because all the animation that I've seen have been incredibly cartoony. I'm really curious about all those controls and I'm going to start with the outer control. That looks like I can just move it around and also scale, which is good. Global scale is always good. You can see here visibility. There's nothing else on the channel. On here, you got the same thing. You also have the switch here for spine. IKFK yes or no. So you can see that switch there. That is on the inner bigger controller. And as always with two controllers, you can move a controller down. And now you have the pivot here, just in case you want to use that now as your flight rig, where that is your, you know, your main pivot point here, just in case. I'm always a fan of having multiple controls and being able to change things like that. Now we have those arms down and the feet together as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and select that and move those feet out a little bit. Ooh, it's already nicely deformed. Anyway, move it back out so we can see the actual controllers. They're actually fairly light in here. So what I'm going to do is darken my background so you can see those controllers a bit better. I hope that works. All right, let's get back here to the feet. You can see here it's the foot. Let's stretch it. It's not on auto stretch. This is on and off now. You can go back here. You also have a twist function for the knee. So the twist is done through here. You have manual stretch, which most rigs have here. Ah, use pull vector. There you go. You can turn that on and off. So you can have it like this. You can have it visually. Actually, I do like it on the channels usually. As we saw before, this is your extra controller to do all kinds of movement and banking. You can see this here. This is in two axes, right? So you can do your foot roll like that you can go pretty far here and then in translate y this is your banking side to side with a nice pivot off the side here then you have a second one here what is this this is the left leg ik2 control 
So I can rotate. Ooh, what is that? That gives you all kinds of crazy stuff. Interesting with those deformations. Left and right through here. These are very separate isolated controls. That's pretty cool. What is that? So that's my wrong axis here. Again, you can move this all around. And you have that same thing here. So you have controls here. Forms into uh, FK mode. Move that around. Stretch. Probably scale, huh? Yes, you can. Let me just double check. Can you scale this? Hmm. You can scale, but we'd have pivot off like that. Interesting. And then you can scale again with a interesting pivot change. Well, that is for you to decide. Are you going to use this? Again, you can pull here. You can rotate this here. Can you stretch? Yes, you can make this foot really, really big. That's cool. What is this here on the side? You have foot banking. Okay, so you can still translate just in case you want to have different pivots, but this is your banking. So you have very specific controls that way. You got the same thing from the front. So you have it like this and you can do your rotation like that. And you have one on the side as well like this. It says scale, but again, I think these are just channels that are open. Your mileage may vary in terms of how you're going to use this. That is the same thing back here. You got rotations pivoting off there and like that. But of course, you can also translate and move this around. Back here is the settings. It says settings here. So that is doing nothing. Again, all the controls are open. Might be good to hide these so we are not confused as to what is going on here. But basically what it gives you is the IK FK function. So now as we go back, you can see here those controllers. You can move this around and move the leg around like that, including all the way back to all of this. Now getting actually closer to this, you can see here, look at that. So you got controls for this. You can move this around. You can translate, rotate and scale. And you have controls for this. That's crazy town. So you can select all of these and that reveals this is how low you can go. You can probably scale this. I mean, you can scale it down and also bring this in if you want to. And you can go fairly far for some boots. Boots. And that's that for the feet. I don't see anything else. Checking here. Do you have any pin? I don't see any knee pins so far. There's nothing in here. You have your follow. Move all cog, hips, chest. That's all very, very cool. But I don't see a pin function. So I'm going to double check later on and maybe add something in the comments. And that, of course, is on both sides. These are the same feet, obviously. Move this back in and we can go up here. You have just quickly here, you get the same things for his shirt. He is empty inside, <laughs> so you can put something in there. Then you have extra controllers here. This is the shoulder, basically shoulder for the hips. So you can do all kind of stuff. Stretching. Interesting again that the pivot is up here. So you translate all of this and you rotate from up here. That's an interesting choice. I would probably keep it down here. No, I don't know. Can you scale? You can scale. Okay. You got the same thing from here. That looks like the IK control for the hips. What, what classic stuff here. Can you scale? Yes, you can. And it scales all the way up here. I, I'm slightly confused in terms of the pivots. Did I control? No. I did not select something weird. I would love for that pivot to be a bit more in the middle. This is your other control here. And if I select that again, it scales all the way up. That is interesting. That is the outer control for the root. You can see here rotation order. This is all what you have here. And then selecting this, you have extra cogs. Ooh, extra controls that are here. That is again that. And you can translate and rotate and also scale. And this is what the scale option will give you. And this goes all the way up here. You can select it here. And actually, when we go to the inner one, remember, you got the spine IKFK switch. So now you have these ones. So you can take that and move it like this. You can scale. And then even have the inner one for that type of extra control, which is cool. So you have this here if you want to rotate like that, but then you can still have the inner control to do fine tuning, which is actually pretty neat. I like that. Now, IK arms, same thing here. You move this out. It's not set to stretchy just yet. You have this on the right side. Auto stretch is this. You have also the twists. 
Then you have the manual stretch and the pull vector, just like with the legs that I missed at the very beginning here. This is that. You got the follow options here. Same thing for this. You wouldn't really need to scale it. I would probably lock that and hide it. But that is your option uh, for the hand here. Whoops, I got to double select here. But you have a second one in here that gives you double control. Again, you can parent this one to something and then still use this to animate stuff around, which I was a big fan of. You have another control here for the sleeves, revealing emptiness. And that here is for your hand. So let's see, we have L arm, left arm, IKFK. So you can have this to switch. This switches to, as you can see, to FK right there. Let me switch back. And that's kind of that. Can you scale? Ooh, interesting. So you can do your spread through scaling. That is not what I expected. That's interesting. So I want to assume that if you rotate, yes. That's for some quick blocking. What if I change it around? Ooh, nice. Okay, that's always cool for quick blocking. I always recommend having separate controllers though to on the fingers just to do some fine tuning. Now, they are not on by default. That is interesting. So if I check here, you have nothing here. And on this one, there is also nothing here. Interesting. This is the shoulder to go up and down. Translate from here and scale out from that pivot point. That's the upper part, torso here, like that. That is your neck here. And you have that, you can pull it up. You got the same option, volume zero to one, which I will check out how to actually implement this. We do have a color control here for the color, color as a foreigner saying this, slowly slowly selecting anyway you have that reveals a not super long neck you can also see it through there and then we have this on the head so many head controls hold on let me just double check here what is this primary controls secondary controls ah there you go that is interesting to be honest i would love for that to be here so when you select this on the hands all your hand options are on the right. I suspected that it was somewhere because I had seen this in the in the preview, but it's not where it's supposed to be. These are all on off. Again, primary on off, secondary, including all the tiny stuff. You have extra controls. That's all the crazy stuff there. That's cool for the sleeves and stuff on the hands. Busy controls. Ah, that's cool. I like that. Then you have lattice controls for more information. This is the absolute bananas part of the rig, which is so super cool for the formations. And uh, the mesh smoothing, which I'm gonna bring down low. But again, I would love for finger controls, all that stuff to be here. I love all the extra things. Like this is a super impressive rig in terms of all the deformations that you can do. But I think in terms of basic usability, uh, I would uh, have that on the hand, like I said, just in case. Seems from a user-friendly uh, point of view a bit easier, but you have all of that here. Can you scale? Yes, you can. That's an interesting scale for all one, two, three. If when you do them at the same time, you can, of course, translate this. You have bend that way for the craziness and bend Y. Again, in terms of customization and moving things around, it's, it's pretty bananas. You can move this around. Of course, you can scale. You can uh, scale. You can ro rotate, translate, and do all the goodies with that and even here you have this select this you move everything absolutely bananas i love this so cool then you have the bembos for the middle section here wah, and wah, and wah. all of that again including that you can see how it forms that let me stick the whole thing grabs all of this and then we get to these controls here you can see fine tuning, fine control. It's really, really cool. It's absolutely bananas, all the things you get here. Now, in terms of usability, let me just, oh, 0 0.1, I want one. Let me just go with the main controls so that it's visually all clear. So you have this here for the neck, and then this is your upper head control. 
where you can move things around. You can see how the eyes are locked to the controller, which is always nice from the beginning. On top of that, you have an isolate on and off, an isolate Y axis, and you have also your rotation order here to change. So if you grab that neck and you move it back and you grab the head, it doesn't do anything. Now, that being said, if I take the neck and move it back, I don't see a world space change in the isolate right now, but even like both of them off, don't really do anything in that regard. That being said, you get a scale, you can get all the goodies on that as well. These are the eyes. Rotate these around or translate, that's all cool. Of course, these are separate. Can you scale? No, nothing happens here. Eyelid follow. So when you have this, and you can see how there's movement, so like that, and you can do follow head, right? So now the eyes are following the head, and when you select this only, you have eyelid follow off, and now you select all of them, you can see the difference, how the geometry here on the left side is moving, but on the right side is not. Again, that's just for the eyelid follow. Then we're down to the jaw, opening up the jaw here, you can see the tongue controls, you move this out here. So you can rotate, scale, and translate. That sounds pretty straightforward. Can you scale the jaw? Yes, you can. You can do that, of course, here. This looks like a cheek control. Scale, just in case, yes, you can. And you have different areas. It gets very, very de uh, detailed in terms of where you can move this. This would be your corner of the mouth which is fairly far. You can also have tiny, tiny controls here, same left and right. And once you're up here, you can see this is your overall mouth mover. Rotate like that. You can also scale. And then on the side here, you have that. On the upper side, you have it here. That's my fault here. I translated out this way. But you have that. And of course, up here, not gonna use all of them. You know what all of that is does it's very cool though lots of controls on the mouth for sure let me close that speak of which now selecting this like the corners that's all you have here there's nothing hidden there's nothing here on the cheeks and there's nothing here on the jaw just in case you're wondering this is for the nose if i get to select it that is your pinocchio right there can you scale the middle yes you can translate also rotate nothing else in the channels just as in FYI, we get to up here, you got that arrow to change the lids there. And maybe just for visibility, I'm gonna do the head smooth or mesh smooth here. Oh, there's no change. Actually, hold on. Is there no mesh smooth? There is no mesh smooth. Okay, interesting. Well, I'm gonna take this, select it and do it manually just in case so that when we Go through here. Let me set that back to reference. Now, when I move this around, you can see here lots of details. Same thing on the right side. You have an overall eye mover, so you can really go anywhere you want to go. You can scale. And then you have that, which I'm assuming is going to be for the lids. Yes, it is. You have it like that. It's not through rotates. There's nothing in scale. It's purely translate. So probably, again, I would look at locking some of those just for a clean usage of all those controllers. This is your outer, hmm, there's no transit. Just as I said, here's one where you have controls locked. So this is only rotates for the eyeballs, just in case you don't want to use those, uh, the head box there, the eye box. And that's kind of that. Let me check again, just selecting this, nothing else. That's that. That looks like the overall eyebrow controller oh you can see how much it's not just the eyebrow actually it deforms okay oh, so it's attached yes so it's going to move more you have that for the inner and then you have all of these for separate movements and yes you can scale that is that and i think that is it for the main controllers now i do want to hide these bring in the secondary stuff aha so now we have all the fine tuning detail like that. That must be the teeth. So actually, let me bring it back then. So just quickly, you can open this. Whoops, you can open that. Okay, so you can see 
how that follows. That must be one controller. All right, can we scale? Yes, we can. What is that? Ooh, separate tooth controls for uh, nice lines there. I like that, that's very cool. Now I just go back just quick, hide this. What else do we have? Ooh, that is really all very fine tuning stuff. Cool. Yeah, you can see here, let's go back this way. Lots of stuff. That's my technical definition here. Lots of stuff. What does this controller do? What does it do? It does lots of stuff. And actually it goes all the way to the eye. So now you can move ooh, iris and pupil. Wait, am I selecting the middle part? Yes, I am. All right, that is done through scale, nothing in the channels. And again, all those tiny things. Oh, including this line, wow. That's cool, that's very, very detailed. I love it. What if you scale? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can get an eye mustache. Would an eye mustache be lower? Is that an eye mustache? There you go. That's cool. I like it. And just checking, you got your bend bows on all the arm stuff. You can see this is how you turn on the fingers. And you know my thoughts on that. All right. Well, let's turn this off. Go to extra controls. Ah, you got that on the uh, root as well. So extra control here. Extra cog. So you have extra on extra. Like I showed before, this is your inception style. And then in here, you can see this is a separation of the head like that. Scale, yes. Rotate, yes. So you can go into very fine tuny line of action of head and really move this around any way you want to into some nightmare scenario which is awesome i love it why not what is this oh cool look at that that is for the lower part of the eye that's bananas is there an upper part no so that's your bottom movement that's really interesting and not the top that's super detailed once again we got more stuff here and we have Ears. Ears for here. Ears. Ooh, this is the whole ear. Okay. And then you got the top one. Can I do an ear rotation? Yes, I can. And just in case. Oh, interesting. So when you scale, you can see what it does to the geometry. You can't go super small because you can see there's some uh, creasing there in the geometry. Just as an FYI, that is the upper part of the head. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. I am super brain. No one is smarter than me. Cool. I like it. I like it. Hair, which is IKFK, some degree. It's cool. I like it. Ooh, what is this? Moving everything. Ooh, I like that. Just in case you're done here, you can do some overall movement and then some fine tuning separately. I like it. What is this? That must be a side head, side hair. Oh, <laughs> with a squash as well. That's cool. That's very cool. These are all three. Okay. And just in case, if I deselect this here and hide, that's what your character looks like without hair. I think I have seen all the options. And clearly, it's an insanely customizable rig. I mean, let's turn all of this on. Holy macro, look at this. No wonder those shots are always so super cool. It's really, really super cartoony. Look at this. That is really fascinating to have all of that ready. And then, of course, you should take this and put some mocap on there. <laughs> you go completely against type. No, it's really cool. I really like it. Let me see. If that was the hair, I don't see anything hair-wise in the back. Oh, okay. So it's also locked. Yes. For once, it's locked. So this is your, your full-on squash and stretch in the hair. I would actually love um, a change in that. Let's see here. So you have volume loss. So you don't have that. Is it freaking out? There's some moments where it freaks out. But you can see here, there is no squash and stretch. Oh, it's me. Oh, volume loss and going into some crazy numbers. That would be a good thing to lock. But here you can see what it does to the hair. But I would love for this control to be unlocked in terms of all translates. But again, if I move this over, it's not just to one. 
goes to whatever number. So I think this would be good to to lock those uh, those numbers. But I would love for some hair control here because I'm going to assume that this is going to grab the whole head. Yes, it does. And it's only because, I mean, you already have this. All the fine-tuning of that little stuff would be kind of cool to get maybe, you know, like a couple sections in the head here, the hair, the backside. Because given that there's so much you can do in terms of, you know, like flattening things, but I don't really want to affect the rest of the head, right? So if you move this, you can see how the front part is moving. I would love for that, I'd say the character, again, if you look at the hair, how far is the head going? Okay, so here, so you have this whole section, right? This whole section is hair. This is where the, the skull is. It would be cool to have an extra control to flatten this. So imagine your character is leaning against the wall so that you can flatten that hair. Um, might as well, since you have all those awesome, fantastic features, just to kind of really push this even further. I mean, I don't know how much further you can go. I mean, it's it's pretty bananas. Now, loading up the dolly rig, you can see it's in terms of controls and everything, very, very similar. You got all those extra controls up here. You got the fashion controls. You got the hearts with all of that as well on top of the hair. So this is the change here where you have a massive ponytail with all kinds of controls, with bigger controls, small controls for details. You can grab these, scale the hair. You can do a bunch of stuff. Now, if you do hide the hair, you can see here you have these options ooh, like that where it looks like that so these are all separate pieces that you can hide and then underneath the head is the same so bring that back up here that is the difference between those two rigs if you look at the face again same controller so if we're used to animating one character maybe the same you have an extra here in terms of detail where you have a uh there you go you can scale this an earring and the eyes are all the same you have different colors actually would be neat to have some options here to change the colors why not something for some future updates why not I mean, you can always do it on your own but anything that's kind of built into the rig is also also uh, appreciated in terms of faster workflow and that would be this rig so so definitely really really fleshed out super cartoony rigs i hope this walkthrough blind walkthrough uh <laughs> was interesting to watch and these are my impressions blind impressions as always thank you for watching feel free to subscribe if you don't miss any of those kinds of reviews and uploads those, all those other uploads on my channel it's the end of the channel the review type of thing the pitch it's the pitch you know I gotta pitch it but that is that again i will blend in the promo code make sure to check that out if you want to use the rig thank you for watching and i will see you or hear you or you will see me and hear me in the next upload thanks